In this video, we'll be converting between parametric equations and rectangular equations. So this is also called eliminating the parameter. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve one of the equations for t. We preferably want to solve the e x equation for t, but if that's too complicated, we can deal with solving the y one, but shoot for the x one if possible. Then we're going to substitute the expression for t into the other parametric equation. So let's convert x equals t minus 1 while y equals t squared, t in between negative 2 and positive 2 into a rectangular equation. We want to start by solving preferably the x equation for t and that's not a big deal here in this one. All we need to do is add 1 to both sides and we get that t is equal to x plus 1. Now we're going to take this expression, x plus 1, and substitute it into our other equation for t. We end up with y is equal to x plus 1 squared. And that's our parametric equation. Now I do want to point out that our domain is affected as we make the conversion. The domain can't possibly be t in between negative 2 and 2 when we are in rectangular form because, well, there's no t. That's not the variable in rectangular form. So if we wanted to figure out what the domain would have to be for this, remember that x is our domain in rectangular, and we've just solved our x equation for t. So to get the domain, what we're going to do now is take this x plus 1 and substitute it in the domain for t. We're going to get that x plus 1 is in between negative 2 and positive 2. We'll solve this sandwich inequality, getting x to be in between negative 3 and positive 1. This tells us that the domain would be equal to negative 3 to 1. So if you're asked for the domain, that's how you figure out the domain once we've transformed into rectangular form. Let's try another one. Let's convert x equals the square root of t, y equals t minus 1 to rectangular equation where t is greater than or equal to 0. So we're going to start by solving one of the equations for t, preferably the x one. And again, this one's not a big deal to be able to solve for t. All I need to do is square both sides. We get then that t is equal to x squared. We're now going to take this x squared and plug it into our y equation for t. We get y to be equal to x squared minus 1. Let's talk about the domain of this one. We're given that t has to be greater than or equal to 0. Well, in rectangular, our x values are our domain. So if x is equal to the square root of t and t has to be greater than or equal to 0, then that means that every x value has to be greater than or equal to 0. So the domain for this one would end up being 0 to infinity. Let's try one that's a little bit tougher. Here, our parametric equations are defined in terms of trig functions. We want to convert x equals cosine of t, y equals sine of t, where t is in between 0 and 2 pi, to rectangular equations. So we're going to do a technique here that we haven't really done before. I have my equations, x equals cosine of t, y equals sine of t. And we're going to use the same general technique anytime our parametric equation is defined as trig functions. If your trig function is not isolated, you want to do that first. So like if this was, you know, cosine 
of t plus 1, you'd want to move that up 1 over and make it x minus 1 before you do this. So make sure that your trig function is isolated. Now what we're going to do is we're going to square both sides of each of these equations. And this is a legal math move for us because we're doing the same thing to both sides of an equation. So our first equation turns into x squared equals cosine squared of t. And our second equation becomes y squared equals sine squared of t. Next, we are going to add these equations down. We've done this before when solving systems of equations using the addition method. So if we add down, I'm going to have x squared plus y squared equals cosine squared plus sine squared. Cosine squared plus sine squared is one of our Pythagorean identities. That's equal to 1. So this equation simplifies to x squared plus y squared equals 1. We end up with the unit circle. All right, now let's go the other direction. We want to find the parametric equations given the rectangular equations. This is probably the easiest thing that we do in math for a long time. There are actually an infinite number of pairs of parametric equations that can represent the same plane curve. So this is what we're going to do to find one of the possible sets of parametric equations is we're going to let x be equal to t and then y equals f of t in which t is in the domain of f. So seriously, do not make this difficult. We know a parametric equation has an x equals and a y equals. Every single time, we're going to let x be equal to t. Now, to get the y equation, all you're going to do is put t in where there was an x. We get y to be 2t minus 5, and that's it. So let's do the other one. x is going to be equal to t y is going to be equal to t squared minus 3. Don't make this hard. Be happy that there's an easy one.